Hey there, my gorgeous friends on the internet. Hope you're having a fantastic day. In today's episode, I want to share with you kind of my journey of learning NeoVim so far. It's been about two months since I started. I also switched my operating system over from Windows to Arch Linux and kind of want to share with you kind of my pain points and also some dicks and tricks tips and tricks, no dicks, only the tip. That sounds bad too. But yeah, I do feel like I'm kind of late to this party. Like a lot of people have been on NeoVim obviously so far, but it was really inspiring to see people like PrimeGen, you know, could really fast. Uh, so that kind of got me into it. So let's get going. Just a little like down there below, you know, I'd really appreciate that if you do that. So thank you. Before I get into NeoVim, I do kind of want to talk just a tad bit about Arch Linux here as well, because one of my main gripes with Windows was just managing all the different windows. It's like, it's so hard not having to reach for a bloody mouse when you're on Windows. Whereas in Arch Linux, I feel like I completely eliminated that. What I mean by that is I can just grab my keyboard here. I can go in my project. I can do a option and T to open up a terminal. I can do multiple ones if I open it up, but I don't even really need that because I tend to just use Tmux. So as you can see, I do Tmux attach and boom, I am between all the different panels that I have here. On my other window here, I have OBS, which I I can quickly also move if I want here on my main screen and back like that. So I'm just doing that with shift option and then you can move that around and I can also highlight different windows as you can see some on the left screen now on the main screen. If I want to do a browser, I can do an option F quickly like that and boom, we are ready to go. Go on localhost. I can show up the example, right? I'm not touching the mouse at all. So this is a really, really fantastic thing. Uh, that kind of connects also with the NeoVim experience. Now, what's wrong with VS Code? I just installed it here with Aur quickly. Aur, how do you say that? Uh, look, I mean, you can learn all the different shortcuts here for like tabbing these open, right? Or if you want to go to file, you can do like a control P and then I can go over to my app TXX like that, right? So you got all the functionality here, but I'm really not a big fan anymore of just like having everything congested here in one little place. Like having the terminal down here by the side as well. Like if you have Tmux, this kind of solves <laughs> solves all of these different problems for you. So you don't really need it. Because the thing is, if you're using Tmux, then you're just doing everything through the terminal anyway. And you know, there's a lot of little things that I can nitpick on, even if like I'm searching for a file here and like, page.tsx. See, I don't really get to see kind of a preview of what I have in there. What if I want to search uh, with grep, you know, if I want to search for a specific text in a file? Well, there's no like super easy way to do that either. Now, there's a lot of things that people complain about VS Code, you know, the speed is slow, it's going to be much slower than something like NeoVim. But my main gripe is that you're, once you're actually in a file, you're pretty much stuck in this like insert mode, right? So pretty much all the keys on your keyboard, like the F, A, it's all for typing, right? It's not really used to navigate around your code base or to get to a specific character maybe in your file. So that is the biggest downside for me. And I honestly don't really feel like talking about VS Code too much anymore, so I'm just gonna close this up. Bye, bitch. Now that we are in NeoVim, let's talk about some of the shortcuts that I really like and some of them that I don't really use too much. So this is gonna be focused on navigation. I'm gonna make a couple more episodes where we're gonna talk about motions and all that jazz. But for now, let's just talk about like navigating, getting to certain places and stuff like that. So the first commands you're probably learning in NeoVim are gonna be the hey, J, K, and L, right? These are for navigating up, down, left, and right. So K is up, uh, J is down, H left, L right, right? Now, even though the J and the K command is quite nice for moving up and down, you might wanna go a bit faster. So a command for that is gonna be shift and down arrow like that and shift up arrow, right? To move a bit quicker like that. But I feel like that's a bit too far away from the J, K, L, H key. So if I wanna quickly go from here, I don't wanna like kind of take my hand away and go to the arrow keys. Instead, what you can do is do control and U to go up, see? And then you can do control and D to move back down. Okay, so control D to down, control U to go up. And let's say we land here, right? And let's say I wanna go over to maybe the shine variant all the way down there, okay? So rather than going like that, right, with the J key, what you can do instead is rely on these numbers here. These numbers are actually fantastic here and they're relative to where you are with your cursor. So if I'm on the transition here, that's position 41, let's say I wanna go to the shine variant. So as you can see, that is 11 there. 
So what you can do is type in 11 and then the down key, so J. Boom, and there we go. We are on the Shine variant. Same goes if you want to go up. So you can do, let's say I want to go to the Ray variant up there. I can do 22K, boom, I'm straight up there. So there we go. Now to actually navigate like left. So this is pretty cool. cool. I do use this quite a bit. I can do like, I want to go to scale. So I'll do 25J, right, boom, done. Um, other than that, let's say here, and let's say I want to go to a specific word, so the Ray variant. Again, I don't really tend to use H and L here to kind of go left and right like that. Let's say I'm a bit down here and like, let's go to the stroke dash array, right? I'm not going to go to a thousand manually like that. So another alternative to that would be to use the W and the B. So W is going to just quickly jump over each word like that, see? which is pretty cool. And then you can do the other way around with B. So go B, 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 which can be pretty good. Uh, I was using this quite a bit, but I even ended up switching this over to something different. So let's say I want to get, I'll just go down here to filter. Let's say I want to get to the two pixels there, right? So if I do L, all right, that takes, that takes a while, right? Uh, another alternative would be to do the W, which I just showed you. So W, W. Okay, I have to type a couple of times before I actually get here, right? The the last one that I actually recommend if you're on a line here. So let's say I'm on 60 here and I want to go over to the first like two pixels there. What I can do instead is type F and then the character that I want to go to. So I can do two and boom, I'm directly there. I can do F and B and I can go directly to the letter B, the next letter that's coming up. Not only that, now that I have the B selected, I can even navigate ahead or backwards. So I can do that with the, the one next to the L, which is the semicolon. So I can go forwards with the B, and then I can do the comma to go backwards with all the B characters. So I mainly stick to that rather than doing J, sorry, not J, H and L, or doing W and B for back and forth uh, with characters. I just tend to go to the line. So let's say I want to go to 16 and select 0 0.3 there. So I'm here, I can do 16K and there we go. And then I can do F3, for example, if I want to get to that specific character, even if I'm here, F3, boom, I'm there. And then here I can modify this any way I want. Another really useful command is if you want to travel to the top and to the bottom of the page really quickly, you can do GG to go top and Shift G to go to the bottom. And this is really cool because it combines with a lot of stuff. So if you want to do like, uh, if you want to quickly copy your whole file and, you know, search up something, you can do Shift V and then do GG and yank and done with the Y. Boom, copy the whole file. If I want to search for a specific character or sentence in here, I usually tend to do the slash here. So I can do slash and do stroke opacity like that, for example, hit enter. And that's where my stroke opacity is. As you can see, it's two out of five here. And I can navigate between them with the N keyword like that. N, N, N. Shift N is going to go backwards. So there you go. You can also do the same thing if you just like hover over something. So let's say I want to go down to scale there. So I can do 16J I'm on scale here. So I can do a star symbol. And look at that. It's automatically going to show me all the instances of scale. All right. So that's another way to just go specifically to the thing and do uh, the star symbol. This is kind of a simple one, but quite helpful. If you kind of lose track where your cursor is, just do ZZ, ZZ. Boom, it'll center it right in the middle for you. So you know where you are. So quickly up, boom, ZZ, right there. Okay, here's one that I discovered quite late in the game, but I think it's fantastic. So let's say we are here at the Ray variant, right? Uh, what I can do is set a mark here. So I can press M for mark, and then I can pick pick any, any other character, like A or Z or Q, anything that I can remember. Okay, so let's say for Ray variant here, I can say mark, and I'm gonna say R for Ray variant. That's it, okay? So now I can go anywhere else in my code. Let's say I'm working here at the bottom, like maybe I have a little function here that I'm working on. X uh, function test, all right? And let's say I'm working here. I can also add a mark here. So M, I'm gonna say T for test. Okay, so now what I can do is I, if I press the string characters on my keyboard, so this one, right, the string, this will pop up at this little menu here and check this out. All your marks are being set here for you. 
when you press M and then a character. So as you can see, we set one for T here, which is function test and one for R, which is const ray variant. So now what I can do is check this out. I can press the string key and I can press R. Boom, I'm straight there. I can do the same thing T, I'm straight back down to test. So this is a really, really cool way if you're working on like two or three things, you can quickly just navigate that with the mark keyword. And that's pretty much it. These are the main ones that I feel are, are pretty good for navigation. Uh, I love to hear more. If you want to leave that down in the description down below, please do it. Uh, but again, I'll make more videos on this. This is a journey of mine. So I'm still like learning a bunch of new stuff. Um, as far as for navigating for files, of course, you have your space FF, right? Space FF, that's with telescope. So you can quickly get to components. If I want to go to the cart component here, as you can see, this is kind of the same as in VS Code, but you have a nice preview here. So I can quickly check that. But most importantly, I have live grep here. So if you install either lazy vim, astro and vim, they all have telescope installed. So you can do space FW. And here I can do something like card, see? So it finds all the instances where I wrote card. And let's do card title to kind of bring this down a bit more. And look at that, that's everywhere in my code base where I typed card title. So there we go, we can ju just jump directly to it. And there we go, other than that, I don't really use the side panel too much, so that would be space E. There we go to open this up. Sometimes I do it when I wanna make some new files. So space E and then A for create re for rename and then D for delete and then space E to close it back up. Or if you're here and you click on something and I'm here, right? And I want to focus back on, on the tree here. I can do space O and then I'm back here. Okay. So enter, I'm here, space O, I'm back here. And that's pretty much all you need. And then it's just really easy to edit these, right? Re for rename, D for delete, and then A for creating a new file. So there we go. I don't want to overwhelm you with a bunch of other shortcuts here, uh, but I feel like these are the main good ones, like core ones for navigation. Uh, but again, I'm new to this, so I would love to hear, you know, some other cool tricks and tips that you guys found as well. So leave it in the comments and I might like it. If I don't like it, I'll delete it. But two months in, I can definitely say that I feel like I can start actually writing code and not feeling like, it, it's a burden to get around anywhere I want to. So that's good. And that's kind of how I wanted to learn as well, where I kind of compartmentalize, that's not a word, that kind of break it down into smaller like chunks and segments. So like one for navigation, right? And then I'm gonna only focus on like being able to like change words and to modify text, all right? So I'll put my attention on there. So the first month for me was just all about navigating around and getting to the text that I want or to the file that I want. Anyway, thank you so much for watching and supporting this channel. Video over.